What is going on, everybody? My name is John Solo, and welcome to another episode of Messed Up Origins. Today's subject of discussion is the story you guys have probably requested the most, Mulan. This was a very interesting topic to research, because unlike stories like Cinderella or Rapunzel, the origin story of Mulan is shrouded in mystery. In fact, the earliest versions were simply legends, and not many records were kept of them, and as time passed, those stories were lost for good. However, there's been a number of rewritten versions throughout the years, the oldest of which is a short poem written around the 5th century, which we're going to talk about today. But first, I have good news. I told you guys last week that if you could get the origin story of Beauty and the Beast up to 5,000 likes by the weekend, I would upload two episodes of Messed Up Origins this week. Well, you guys did it, so here's what we're going to do. Today, I'm going to go over the Mulan story that we all know and love, as well as the oldest recorded version of the story that currently exists. In a few days, we're going to go over another Mulan story that I kind of want to keep a secret for now, but I know you guys are going to love. Before getting into all that, though, let's first dive into the Disney version of the Mulan legend because it's amazing. Sit back, relax, hit that like button, and enjoy. The movie opens with the Huns invading China and the Emperor calling for a draft so that one man from every family has to join the army. The family of our protagonist, Fa Mulan, has no men other than her elderly father, who's already seen a great many battles. Because Mulan doesn't feel like the traditional female role in China fits her very well, she decides to enlist in her father's place, posing as a man. It turns out the rest of the draftees aren't exactly suited for war, but Mulan is still the brunt of everyone's jokes. After one of the greatest training montages ever created, she starts to feel confident in her skills, like she's doing the thing she was always meant to do. Things are going great, and she even proves herself capable on the front lines, but her identity as a woman is eventually found out, and she's kicked out of the army. Shortly after this happens, the Huns invade the imperial city, capture the emperor, and seize the palace. With the help of some friends, ironically dressed as females, she's able to rescue the emperor, and after a dope fight scene, take out the Huns' leader. In the end, everyone develops great respect for Mulan, including her family, ancestors, and all of China, and she lives happily ever after until the sequel. Man, that is a good story, huh? Like I said earlier, Earlier, this movie is based on a short poem called The Ballad of Mulan that was written roughly around the year 500. It's not nearly as exciting as Disney's story, but Mulan is just as awesome of a character. Pretty cool fun fact, actually. To this day, no one actually knows whether or not Mulan was a real person. The general consensus from historians is that she wasn't a real person and that all the legends about her grew from this one poem written to promote gender equality. But because it was written so long ago, there's no way to actually verify whether or not she's real. Anyways, it's about time we dive into the story. It opens up with Mulan weaving with a few other females, but she's noticeably upset. In the dead quiet of that morning, the only noise being made was that of her worried sighs. Like, ugh. You know? Someone asks her what's wrong, and she says the emperor issued a military draft so that one man from every family in China needs to enlist. Similar to the movie, the only man in Mulan's family eligible to enlist is her father. In this version, she also has a considerably younger brother and her sister. Mulan decides she wants to fight in her father's place because he's old and dying, so she buys the necessary equipment so she can travel to the military outpost. She buys a horse in the East Market, a saddle in the West Market, Market, a bridle in the South Market, and a whip in the North Market. One thing I'm not certain of is why exactly she went to different markets for the equipment. Part of me wants to say it's to cover her tracks, like so no one sees her buying all four things at once and then tells her parents that she's up to something. But it could also totally be because this is a poem and there's something poetic about dividing the items up into the four different markets. She sneaks out the next morning without telling her parents and then makes camp by the river. The river is far enough away that her parents won't be able to find her after they discover that she left. The morning after that, she heads out towards Black Mountain, and this has to be around the time she enlists, because the next line says, Mulan traveled 10,000 miles on the business of war. An important detail that's actually a huge difference between the poem and the movie is this version of Mulan doesn't go through a training montage. She was actually taught everything she needed to know about horseback riding and combat from her father at a very young age, and she utilized these skills during battle. 
battle. After roughly 10 years of war and suffering heavy casualties, China defeats the invading forces and Mulan in particular is recognized for her efforts by the emperor. This all happens while she's disguised as a man, so unlike the movie, she actually successfully hides her true identity. She ends up being promoted to a high rank in the military and the emperor says he can give her any reward she wants, but all she asks for is a swift horse to ride home. Word apparently travels fast in China because her parents and siblings receive the news that she's on her way back and wait outside the Great Wall for her return. Sometime later, Mulan's military comrades come and pay her a visit, only she's no longer wearing her soldier's uniform, so when they see that she's a female, their minds are blown. And then the story ends with a short poem which I shall read to you now. The he hare's feet go hop and skip. The she hare's eyes are muddled and fuddled. Two hares running side by side close to the ground, how can they tell if I am he or she? Mic drop. So I think what she's saying is that while there is a difference between males and females when you look close up, when you're running into battle side by side with your fellow soldiers, no one can tell the difference. Or at least the enemy can't tell the difference. And that is the entire story of Mulan. I hope you enjoyed it despite it being shorter than either of us would have wanted. You can expect another one based on a different version of the Mulan story to be uploaded this weekend. In the meantime, if you did like this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe with notifications on for new content just like this every single week. You guys keep blowing my expectations right out of the water, so let's see if we can get this video to 5,000 likes. Also, don't forget to hit that share button to easily share this video on social media with your friends and family, and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for updates on what I'm doing between videos. I'll be seeing you all very soon. Until next time, my name is John Solo, and thanks for watching. <laughs>